Hi there and welcome to Cars Drones Computer. So today I'm going to be dismantling the Osmo Pocket. We already took a deep look inside the wireless module and now I want to see what's inside this thing. So let's get started. Okay, so first thing we gotta do here is uh, take off this one big piece of skin here that I added on and I'm actually gonna try to save it. Try to get the rest of this. All right, so I got that piece off. Came off pretty good, so I can put that back on. Gotta figure out basically how to get in there. Maybe a razor knife would work. Let's try this razor knife here. Oh, wow, I just busted off part of the razor blade in there. No. There we go. That's a little progress. Right here. Ooh, 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 I don't know what's in there. I don't want to stick the knife all the way in. What do we got in here? Let's have a little peekaboo. Ah, uh, battery. Yeah, definitely don't want to stick a knife into the battery. That wouldn't be good. Maybe down here? Yep, there was another one. Boom. Okay. Go right there. Oh. All right, that's pretty easy. A little snap cover. So, uh, I wonder if you can get like custom ones, maybe with like better grips or something. That'd be interesting to see. All right, so here we got a look at the battery, and oh, DJI sticker on it. Uh, lithium ion, 7.7 .7 volts, 875 milliamp hour, 6.738 watt hours. Now I gotta figure out how to take that out. It's not just falling here. Okay, looks like they got some sort of adhesive holding it down. These are soft aluminum packs, so. You gotta be careful. Looks like a lot of cables up here too. Wow, all kinds of little tiny cables. So I'll try not to mess those up. Um, let me see if I got a plastic tool or something to uh, pry on this battery. I don't really wanna mess this battery up. Okay, so the best I could find here was this uh, glass nylon propeller. I'm gonna try to use that as my pry tool. Get this out of here somehow. Ah, oh, there we go. Get the brake loose here on the bottom. Notice all the electronics here on this side of the board and even the USB C is here, so I'm guessing it looks like all of this is battery. Okay, we got a small ribbon cable here on the back side. Yeah, you take that off and oh, voila. Okay, now be careful, I don't want to bust this uh, ribbon cable. I'll take off the rest of this adhesive and put that back in later. Like right here, right there where I'm pointing at. These are a whole bunch of really tiny wires. So that would be all the wires that control this brushless motor inside that rotation part of the gimbal. And this one right here, and this one right here. So three axis gimbal, it's got three motors. At least, maybe even more. Depends on if they got one on each side here for the actual main head. But it seems like this is a piece of metal right here. Yeah, definitely a piece of metal, you can see here. Scratch a little bit. And it looks like, I noticed right here, there's some blue material. That appears to be some sort of thermal paste. Most of what I use in computers is gray. So if I take this plate off, I'm guessing I'm gonna have to replace the thermal paste, unless it's a relatively new device. Maybe I can harvest it and reuse it, but now I gotta figure out how to get that off. Screw right here holding down the plate, I think. And there's two screws right here, so I'm avoiding my warranty for y'all. Warranties to me aren't that exciting. So it looks like we have three really small Phillips screws. So let me take those three out and uh, see what's underneath. So we got these here. Kind of hold the battery too here while I take out the screws. All right, so I've got those. I need to be careful because I know when I go to take this plate off, it's probably gonna have a certain amount of suction because of uh, the thermal paste that I can see squeezing through here. And I don't want the screws to come out and go flying, yet I really can't seem to get them out. I don't want to put a magnet to it because you never know what things are underneath. Let's see, okay. Definitely giving me a little working room here. I'm just kind of sticking my screwdriver in here, slightly twisting as I pull back. There we go. Be careful of all these little fine wires over here just waiting to get ripped. The real trick here is going to be what happens when I put this all back together and will it still work? 
Ooh. You can see the circuit board underneath. I've actually pulled some of that away. I hope I'm not completely wrecking that up. Yeah, you can't even see these in here anymore. So I've definitely moved those. Boy, I gotta be careful here. I don't wanna wreck this thing. Ah, oh. I never claimed to know what I was doing here, guys. Mm -hmm. That was some of it. Oh, jeez. Okay. Wow, that is an excessive amount of thermal paste. Okay, first thing I noticed, there's a spring right here. Don't want that little guy to... Yep, there we go. I really don't want to take off the gimbal plugs right here because there is so many wires. I'm counting at least 24 wires right here. Probably more than that. So even take that and then there's two plugs and these wires are so tiny. So we got a plug right here for the button control and then another plug, the one that wrapped around the larger one for right here. So this is the buttons and this is for the screen itself. Hmm. Interesting. It's a pretty loaded up PCB. I'm gonna go ahead and look up these chips here real quick for you. I wonder if that's the flash memory. Oh yeah, I need to, need to clean this off too. So I went online here and did some digging and this chip right here is uh, the memory. So it's got 16 gigs of onboard uh, Micron LP DDR3. The only way you can buy this stuff if, if it's in bulk is $40.39 per chip. So there's a little bit of your money. Um, right here, these here are your motor drivers. So there's three and one for each of the uh, motors and your three axis gimbal. So that does confirm there's just three. And these are about $1.30 a piece monolithic power systems, uh, three channel half bridge drivers. Uh, each of them is rated about five and a half amps and it's good to know they do have uh, overload and thermal overload protection. And so if you overheat your Osmo because you got too much friction on or something, they will shut down before they burn up. So that's a nice little safety feature. So let's talk a little bit about the SOC right here. And that is a Amborella H22 design. So Amborella releases at CES 2017. Um, it does have, it's a one gigahertz quad core ARM Cortex A53 processor capable for up to 4K 60 and 1080p at 120. So it's a good thing they did give us that and the final firmware in the Osmo Pocket because this chip is, was certainly capable all along. It also has the ability to connect to wireless. So if they did make this a little bigger, they, this processor has the ability to process wireless and even 4G LTE. Um, it also has Bluetooth out and it can talk to LPDDR4, LPDDR3 or DDR3L. Of course it can talk to a SD card. It can also do um, HDMI out if you had it set up for that. It's 14 nanometer uh, manufacturing uh, process and uh, it basically runs on a version of Linux. So it has uh, HDR support, of course, the simultaneous second stream, so that's good for streaming. And of course it has the ability for two streams. So one you would be seeing on your Osmo Pocket screen or if it was sending it to through the wireless module to your phone. And of course it's also recording a second version of that stream. It can record in H.264 and H.265 as well. So with all that said, I'm going to go ahead and reassemble this thing and see if I uh, have broken my Osmo Pocket. Hopefully I haven't. I went ahead and put all of the uh, thermal paste basically back where it was. It seemed like it's still, in, it's very uh, soft and malleable. So I'm gonna go ahead and reuse it. If it does overheat, I'll go ahead and put some of this uh, thermal take TG7 or uh, I might have some IC Diamond or something like that that I use for my uh, computers. And I'll put that on there. But for now, I wanna go ahead and use the factory stuff. This does get pretty warm, passively cooled heat sink, but uh, Anyway, so let me go ahead and reinstall this and try not to bust any of these really tiny little wires and uh, see how we can do it. Before I button this thing all up and put this back on, I'm gonna definitely feel the processor, make sure it's not too warm. Go ahead and turn it on, okay. Yeah, definitely still turns on. Oh, there's a little power light right there, that's cool. The power light on the front side here too, but then you also get this one right there. Processor's not even warm, so I'm gonna go ahead and shut this off. Now the firmware has it so that it holds this for eight seconds after you shut it off, so this light should go out here momentarily. There it goes. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish putting everything back together. All right, so the takeaway is, I think there's some interesting components here for the Osmo Pocket. And uh, I'm really glad to see that it still works, of course, because uh, that has sucked, because uh, 
Pretty sure the DJI Care plan wouldn't like the fact that I dismantled the thing when I broke it. Definitely uh, glad it still works here and I'll keep using it on the channel. Overall, I wish that you could remove the battery with just that snap cover, that ain't too hard to do but I wish you could do that with, without taking off uh, that plate with the thermal compound and everything. I understand they want to keep that plug, make sure it's attached, but a little screw or, I mean, they already glued it or seem to be super worried about it falling off, but hopefully that battery uh, lasts a very long time. I guess uh, time will tell. And uh, if you're viewing this two years from now and your Osmo Pocket needs its battery replaced, well, I am sorry that, it, that that's what has had to happen. And uh, I hope that this video helps you even then. So uh, thank you all so much for watching this episode of Cars, Drones, Computers. So until next time, have a great day and bye for now.